hello everybody. I simply had to do a review of this amazing new modeling amplifier and effect system made by a company called Valton or Valaton and it's called the GP200. So I'm one of the really early adopters of the Kemper profiling system and I love it. I use it all the time. It's been all, all around the world on tour. I use it in the studio all the time. It's just utterly fantastic. Uh, but recently, um, I've got some work come through where I'm just going to be doing some solo stuff. And I don't really want to be taking racks of gear and effects pedals and all that kind of stuff. I just want a really simple setup. And I had a little look at some of the kind of profiling software, sorry, the modeling software that you can get. And some of it's really, really good, but I just cannot, I'm old school, I cannot cope with any form of delay whatsoever in, in terms of latency. So I was looking at the Line 6, um, you know, I, I didn't want to spend an awful lot of money on, on the new system. And the Helix stuff looks amazing. Um, there was a guy demonstrating it on the Anderton's website, what an incredible player, I believe is something to do with Line 6. And it really sold me on that. But I had to be going for the 8 button option. I can't remember, it's the, the more expanded kind of version. I've got the same sounds in there, but just more buttons but it's a hell of a lot more money. Um, so I did a little bit more research and I came across this Valaton thing. Valaton, I'm not sure how to say it. And I must shout out to Andertons because their videos that they did on this were absolutely superb. Um, now, there's a couple of things I really, really like about this. Uh, first of all, the sound, because that's the beginning and end for me. But the attention to detail, like if you can see the profile here, the rear switches here, protrude slightly more than these. So when it's flat on the floor like that, it makes it super easy to select one of the back buttons or one of the, the front buttons. It's just a lovely little t attention to detail that I really, really like. And also the thing that the Line 6 didn't have is this expression pedal or volume pedal. You can assign it for multiple different things. And some people don't like a pedal included in that, but I do. I, I think it's really, really useful, especially if I'm doing any kind of Jimi Hendrix Univibe, Rotavibe kind of stuff, wah-wah, volume. I do a lot of swell stuff as well. So that, that it was just a no-brainer for me. I've literally got it today. I plugged it in. I flicked through a couple of sounds and I thought, I've got to make a review because I want to play through and give you my impression of the different settings as we go through. Um, so first of all, the tuner, if we press and hold this one, we get a lovely huge display here. So I'm going to grab a guitar. So there's no doubting the display on that. Uh, if you're on a dark stage, that's going to look amazing. Um, so let's have a look at the very first sound. This is, it's called an It's GP200. <laughs> Great rock sound, delay, reverb, it's got everything on there. I don't think it's uh, any accident that they put a fantastic sound as the very first one on there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's a great sound. Um, obviously, if we go to the screen, I've got the software up on my computer. You absolutely do not need it connected to the computer in order to work it, uh, but it just makes switching effects on it. Well, I say um, it makes it easier. Very nicely, let me just turn that off. You've got some switches here, so I can re turn the delay off um, by pressing and holding, it would seem. <laughs> okay, so that's now with the reverb and delay off. <laughs> And if I want to go to the screen, I simply tap on here to get them back on. So I, I love the control and the flexibility of that. I'm going to flick to the next sound. Let's have a little look. It's going to ask me on the computer whether I want to save that preset. So if I wanted to save it into the unit, it's simplicity itself. I'm not going to save it at this point. So what I need to look at now is the next sound that is uh, um, which amp we're using, and that is a JMP50. And funny enough, they do have that kind of boxiness to them, that kind of... 
I'm not madly keen on that kind of middliness. I'm I'm very much a scoop the middle out kind of guy. But that's just the amp on its own. Obviously, we can change the cabs as well and try different things. Uh, this is showing me that it's currently set to a two by twelve greenback. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, that does sound pretty damn close to me, that kind of thing. A 4x12 greenback. Okay, now it's got a bit more girth to it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. So let's just have a quick flick through. It always asks me if I want to save. It defaults, the little graphic that comes up, it shows you the first thing in the chain other than the noise gate, I believe. Is that correct? I'm just trying to figure this out. So this is um, basically Fender Deluxe. All these sounds are completely tweakable. I get what they're doing. They're putting effects on there to show you what can be done. Uh, just like the Kemper, there's lots of stuff buried in there that a lot of people don't really uh, utilize. They, they might use the amps a lot and not necessarily get into the uh, inner workings of it. But I, I know why they do that. But it's so easy to turn the effects off if that's what you want and just use the amplifier. Uh, and again, the amp in this instance uh, is a Bogner. Okay, perfectly usable. You often found, find that it's the clean sounds actually that uh, betray modeling amps. Now, I love matchless. I love matchless amps. Uh, one of my favorite ones is my Kemper. I use a, a matchless model all the time. So I'm just changing the boost. I'm just upping that a little bit. And I'm, I'm not purely beholden to having this boost on. I could put a different boost. That's the old MXR. It's got that slight, I want to say boxiness, but that's to do it a disservice, really. I'm going to turn up the bass a bit. Very, very nice. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Okay. Okay, so what amp have we got here? This is an orange, an orange rocker. Yeah, it might not be my first choice for many things, but I'm sure it'd be, be useful for something. Okay, I'm gonna give something like the Telecaster a go on this, the old Fender Bassman. These are different flavor of guitar, I do believe. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see what this does. Ooh, let's use that tuner. I'll be with you in a sec. Okay, now we've got the Telecaster in tune. We can do some bluesy. Got a nice twang to it. What have we got here? Another clean one, so I'll stick with the Fender for now. Ah, JC200, I used to own one of these back in the day. Yeah. I must have had mine in the 80s, my JC120. And actually the chorus on it was quite noisy. I think it's probably even more usable than the original one. Let's 
turn that reverb down a bit. It's just flooding a little bit. So just go to the mix button there. Yeah, I don't like too much reverb on. Yep, I'll definitely use that one. What have we got here? Oh my god, it's a Soldano. Right, I've definitely got to use the Les Paul on this one. Alright, I was looking at the Neural DSP version of Soldano. I was very tempted to get it, but again, because of the latency, just can't cope with it. Yeah, they are a bit middly. I'm going to turn the middle down. It's just my kind of thing. I'm going to turn the bass up. Let's see. That screams. Let's try it without the delay. Just hit that button. Oop. Hit that button and turn it off. Oh yeah. Okay. What amp have we got? I kind of wanted to show the amp first of all. There's probably a setting of not, of course, not read the fucking manual. Yeah, that's got the boxiness of an AC30. Yeah, definitely. I never really got on with AC30s. Up there, I've got an AC50 head that I absolutely adore going through um, a 4x12, something like that. Ooh, just trying a different cabinet. These different impulse responses make a really big difference. Bogner cabinet. Let's try matches. Got a bit more cock in it. Yeah, I like that. Um, this is great. I mean, I'm, I'm hardly into all these settings and I've got perfectly usable things. Oh yeah, I mean this is great. This one's called Ed's Story, I wonder what this is. Oh, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. A mess of Lone Star. It's very nice. I used to own a Mesa Mark IV. I've never had a dual rectifier or anything like that. Uh, I've always found Mesas a little bit tricky to get on with. Uh, just not my kind of thing. It's not to say they're bad, it's just not my kind of thing. So, okay, so expression pedal is linked up to what? Okay. <laughs> Okay, my software just crashed. Let's try this again. Okay, so it's something to bear in mind. My software crashed. I am working on a Mac, Mac Mini. I can hear the fan kicking in now, so it's obviously doing a bit of thinking. <laughs> really nice. What's a radio cat? Is it a bad cat? No! <laughs> it's a super idea. Right, so I believe that the very first Led Zeppelin album was recorded with a super idea. 
I'm going to take the modulation off, I'm going to take all the delay <laughs> and reverb off. Let's give it a bit more saturation. <laughs> okay, uh, we probably need some kind of a distortion pedal on there, but I'm not going to get into that now. What this is showing me is with very little tweaking, you can get exactly the sound that you're after. And the fact we can do it straight away on the screen, I absolutely love this. Uh, what's this amp? Another box, Mr. Brown. I'm guessing this is a Friedman. Goes, is it in here? And I broke a string. So this is nice. This is uh, obviously saturated in uh, chorus. Just backing off the pedal bit. Yeah. Again, I'm hardly, I've hardly gone through any of the presets in here. I can't remember how many there are, but there's a lot. Uh, another AC30, let's not bother with that for now. What we've got here, AC Sim. So this is a... Oh, an acoustic simulator, okay. Okay, that's like a piezo sound. Um. It's not going to make me want to get rid of my Fender Acoustasonic, but I tell you what, in, a, in an emergency, if I couldn't be bothered taking loads of different guitars around, yeah, I think it's usable. Okay, so here's our rectifier. I'm going to take a bit of middle out. A bit more middle. Love it. Okay, I'll definitely be using that one. What we got here? Okay, I'll leave that one alone. Okay, so this is um, Fender Twin, but it's got a really high octave on it. Ah, useful effect. But again, these things, you don't have to have that sound on. Let's take it off. Let's just get back to the amp. Okay. So the effect is on there somewhere. Okay. Fart voice. I'm not even going to bother clicking on that. Angle 120. I wish I knew some Dimebag Daryl stuff. I don't know my Cowboys from Hell or if I should practice it and then do another video. Yeah, it's got that real grittiness to it. What's this one? Ah, VH4. 
Same thing goes, I'm not really a metal player, so I should know some, um, some Metallica, but... So I'll play some Black Sabbath instead. Yeah, not that that is a very Black Sabbathy sound, but I just decided to play that. Anyway, oh, back to our Soldano. We love Soldano. Okay, that's very middly. All the controls are at 12 o'clock on there. So let's dial out some middle, put a bit of bass in. Not, not too much care going into it. It's that EQ mechanism. Yeah, it was. Okay. Take the distortion off. Take the modulation off. Okay. Personally, I'm not mega into like strange effects and stuff like that. I will use them, I will use them, uh, totally, depends on the song, but at this point, me personally, I'm more interested in what the amps can do, but Endless Dream, is this a floaty one? Yes, it is. Pink Floyd. Gonna write a Pink Floyd album now. That will definitely get used, like that, like that. This one's called Nice Solo, what have we got here? Another angle. Not my kind of thing, but it's definitely some people's thing. Well, I feel sick. Dr. Z. I've never used one of these. I'm going to take the mod off. Okay, that's pretty cool. Take the EQ off. See what the distortion is doing. I'm going to turn that off. Ooh, that's just the amp. Yeah, that will get used. What we got here? Oh, that's like an auto wire. Okay, no need for that. Sweet little Sam. These are so usable. I'm loving all this. I, honestly, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's definitely got that martial middliness from the JCM 800. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. Okay. Ah, okay, so how about...
Yeah, love that. <laughs> That'd be better without the delay, I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Another auto one. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Channel your inner prince. Okay, I know what this is trying to be. This is trying to be, uh, ain't talking about love, isn't it? Which I don't think it is, it hasn't got the brown sound, but... Let's turn that modulation off. Probably tweaking that modulation if I could be bothered, I'd get nearer to... <laughs> Definitely got that 5150 kind of vibe. Back to the metal -y angle, these are great. Yeah. What's a robot? I don't like the sound of this. No, it's shit. I'm going to change the strat for this one. Yeah, my strings on this strat are dead as a dodo, but it's definitely got that wall kind of vibe there. Yeah, I like that. Very nice. If you wonder why the sound cut off then, I've got my foot on the um, volume pedal there. I'm just cutting it off very quickly. Uh, Marshall 900s, I never got on with them, so I'm not gonna bother with that. It's just not my kind of thing. It's really funny, you know, I used to play in a band with this guy called Mark, Mark Desilu. How you doing, Mark? And I used to love the sound of his combination of his Strat and his JCM 900. And one day in rehearsal, I was like, dude, I love the sound of your rig. And he was like, I love the sound of your rig. And at the time I was using, I think I had a Plexi uh, 50 watt small box Marshall, 1968, really nice. And a Marshall governor pedal. And he was really, Mark was really digging my sound and I was really digging his. And one rehearsal, we switch, switched over to give each other's rig a go and played a song. And we both sounded pretty shit actually on, on each other's rigs. And it's, it's funny how you grow with your own kind of sound. As, as much as a JCM 900 is very, very popular, it's not my kind of amp. So I'm not even gonna bother with that. But if you're into JCM 900, you're gonna love it. Grindrod, I don't even know those. Okay. Yeah, okay, more, more effective stuff. Okay. Old school stuff. Ah, this is fun. That must be the old kind of Roger Mayer. Is that the kind of Mayer fuzz? Oh, it's, no, it's not. Let's see whether we've got a Roger Mayer in here. How do I change that? Be somewhere here. Has he got one? Might have. Don't know. All will be revealed as time goes on. Let's go crazy with the fuzz. Just make something ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Okay, what have we got? What have we got? Another 800. Oh, that is your kind of, I'm going to turn the reverb off, and that is your kind of ACDC, isn't it? That's the other thing. 
not too, you know, you listen to those records, they don't have a tremendous amount of gain. It's not like today where we just absolutely saturate. <laughs> presence up a bit. Love it. Don't ask me to sing that one. Even get up there, my god, how did he ever do that? JTM 45, yeah, again, it's got that kind of boxiness to it that they have. This unit uh, reacts really well to backing off the volume, um, works really well. Little jazz, what have we got? What have we got? Another basement. Okay, I'm just going to do a few more. I haven't even touched the surface that we've got available. Nice phasey thing there. I'm just going to quickly go through. Another saturated bogner. These are all completely usable. Don't let the fact I'm just glossing over them make you think. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend the angle. Okay, it's just all great stuff. Modern clean. Yeah, I'd go with that. this stuff. This is all usable stuff. Okay, I think I've heard enough. What do I think? I actually think, wow. This thing has cost 299 pounds. I think it's really important to say that I haven't been paid to do this. I bought this with my own money. I've not been given it. I think this is incredible. Uh, given the fact what you might pay for something like a Kemper or an Axe FX and all that kind of stuff, a lot of money. My goodness, this is going to keep me going for a long time. What do I love about it? I love the fact it's got a really big screen on it. That is really, really helpful. Um, some of these things, like the Line 6 has got a smaller screen. And, I, you know, obviously uh, getting to my age as well, the eyesight starts going. It's good to have a bigger screen. I love the fact that I can access individual effects on here. I happen to love the fact, fact it's got an expression pedal. I have seen a video where someone described that as a, a bad thing. I, I only think it's a good thing. It means I can stick this in my case and I don't have to 
bother with a, a separate uh, um, expression pedal. I absolutely love it. I talked about these buttons being slightly higher. I absolutely love that. The fact that you can access all the parameters through there and you don't have to flip through too many menus, I think is a big plus. Uh, the connections are amazing. It has balanced outputs. It has unbalanced outputs. It's got an FX loop. Uh, you can plug your phones directly in and you can also uh, do MIDI in and out, which is a good thing because I am hoping that I can use my software when I'm doing these solo shows I've got to do. I might even be able to switch the sounds once I've I know what I'm using and I can program them in. I'm guessing I'll be able to switch the sounds from the software and not even have to bother about doing my um, ballet dancing on these switches here. Um, I love it. I think the only thing, if I was being mega critical, is the fact that if you want to use it as an interface to record directly into your system, it only seems to do 44.1 at 24 bit, which is fine. Uh, but I tend to do all my recordings in 48. Now, there must be a very good reason for that. I'm guessing it's a price thing. Um, but in this day and age where you can get converters that cost like 20 quid and they can do up to like 96K and stuff, I don't quite understand why it's just pinned at 44.1. Um, maybe there's a big brother to this, whether it's here at the moment or they're going to pull one out that's got higher sample rates, I don't know. Um... Certainly with my Kemper, I like to use a digital output. I use um, uh, SPDIF going into my interface from my Kemper. With this, it does have a USB-C, but because it's 44.1, I probably won't be using that. I'll probably just be going out of the XLRs straight into the system, but that is a minor, minor gripe. I've got to say, for the money, it's absolutely incredible. As I understand it, you can load your own impulse responses as well for the cabinets and all, all that stuff. And I've got to say, I'm just absolutely over the moon with this. It's probably saved me, well, maybe 250 quid at least uh, to get a comparable Line 6 product. But actually, I think this has got benefits that outweigh the Line 6. Now, uh, having said that, I haven't actually listened to the sounds on the Line 6 apart from online but I don't think these are too far away. Um, if you're happy to get your hands dirty in the software, I think it's good to make up your own sound. Some of the effects are a little bit full on, but I get why they do it. They, they're just wanting to show you what the, um, what the unit can do. Um, but quite often I think I'll be stripping a lot of things back and just getting down to the amp models uh, and changing the speakers and maybe the distortion pedal in the front and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but there will undoubtedly be times where I'm using these amazing effects and they are amazing. It just staggers me what you can get for your money. I think for guitar, this is one of the most important bits of gear I've bought in a long time. This is not getting sent back. I'm keeping this. The sounds are amazing. Will it replace my Kemper? I think in a lot of ways it probably can. Uh, at this moment in time, because of the 48K business, I think I'll be keeping hold of my Kemper for now. But certainly for going out doing small gigs and so on, I'll be using this rather than taking my, my Kemper out, you know, that expensive piece of equipment. Um, this, it's small, light, it's got the expression pedal there. It's just so compact and useful. It's got a ton of different uh, options on it, both effects and the modeling, which is superb. I think they're onto an absolute winner here. So Valton or Valaton, however you say, you get a double thumbs up from me. Well done. And I really look forward to seeing the other stuff that you come out with, but I don't honestly see how you can beat this. This is absolutely fantastic. For anyone on a budget or anyone that is, isn't even on a budget, you need to check this out. If you're looking at any kind of amp modeling software, um, whether it's in, in your computer or whether it, it's like a, a, a SIM kind of pedal or anything like that, you owe it to yourself to check this out. Uh, again, I want to show my appreciation to Andertons for doing such a good video that, that kind of made me pull the trigger on this. And I'm really, really glad that I did. So um, thanks a lot. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, subscribe if you want. Don't if you can't be bothered. I don't really care. Um, and uh, as I say, just hope you got something out of this. See you again.